Namaste. I'm always surprised, although by now I shouldn't be because it's happened so many times. The other day I made a video when I was in an ecstatic state. And it got more likes. It didn't get really so many views, but it got more likes than any other video. But then when I make a video on how I qualified for that experience, it gets very few views, very few likes, very few comments and so on. See, <laughs> I don't like to give you sales talk about how great enlightenment is and oh, isn't it wonderful and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Well, now I can do more of that because I have professional lighting and I can make a video any time of day or night. So when I'm in the mood, you know, I can just hit the lights and lay down a, a video. But, you know, I would really be giving you more value if I did videos on how to do sadhana, on how to understand the scriptures. That would be more value for you than just hearing me, you know, when I'm all happy. <laughs> Going, oh, isn't this beautiful? Wow, you know. We'll go through these holy names. And if you're smart, if you're intelligent, you'll study them. You'll download the book, which I have linked in the video description in the playlist. Uh -huh. And study these holy names. Meditate on them. And chant them. There's so many nice recordings on, the, on YouTube of the Lalita Sahasranama. You can play one of them, slow it down if necessary, but chant these holy names. We also link to the text so you don't have the commentary in the way. You can just go chant along with the, uh, you know, whoever's video you download. There's several that are very good. So I'll link to a good one also in the comments or in the uh, video description of this video. So, now let's take a look at Nama 99. Mula Dharaika Nilaya. Huh? The Mula Dhara Chakra. She resides in the Mula Dhara Chakra. Mula means root and Adhara means support. So Muladharaika Nilaya means that she resides and is the support of this root chakra. This is the seat of the Kundalini. This is the life energy that sustains this body. So as the Kundalini, she is responsible for all the bodily functions. This is why if you please her by nice devotional service, you get excellent health. I'm 74 years old and I've, I've actually never felt better in my life. You know, there's a lot of things I can't do anymore, you know, like long distance swimming and stuff like that. But it doesn't matter because I'm much more comfortable in my body because I have a good relationship with the Kundalini with the mother. Now, this uh, Muladhara Chakra uh, is going to be covered in Namas 514 to 520. So at the present rate, we should get to that in about 10 years. <laughs> but what can I do, you know? If people aren't interested, enough to give these videos a good number of views, it's hard for me to be interested enough to make them. So you know what to do, right? Now the next name, Nama 100, 
is Brahma Granti Vibhedini. She pierces through the Brahma Granti. What is the Brahma Granti? Granti means not. And Brahma, of course, refers to the Creator, Lord Brahma. So, what does this have to do with her? Well, these are knots. Actually, all the chakras are vortexes of ego identification. Identification with the body. But the, the Brahma Granti is an especially important knot in the uh, psychic channels in the spine. Ida, Pingala, and Sushumna. Because this is the place where our identification with the body is located. Physically. It's between the Dantian or the energy storage chakra and the next chakra, the moving chakra in, or breathing chakra in the solar plexus. In fact, it's right about at the location of the navel, the belly button. And this granti is so hard to break that many people never get through it. You know, take, for example, the people who study yoga, right? <laughs> Sometimes they even call it hatha yoga or ashtanga yoga, but practically speaking, it's only about asanas. Why? Yoga is about much more than asanas. In fact, in all of the yoga sutras, the word asana is only mentioned twice. But the word for consciousness is mentioned something like 45 times. <laughs> so yoga is really about consciousness. It's not about the asanas. Those are just sitting postures to help regulate the body so that you can forget about it and concentrate on your consciousness. But instead, people fetishize the postures and they make like that's the whole thing. Well, that's it's just part of the preliminaries, you know? It's not even really <laughs> the beginning of yoga. Real yoga is defined in the second sutra where he says, he defines yoga as Stopping the modifications of the mind. Modifications of the mind, vritti is the name for it. Vritti means the changes in the mind due to the qualities of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. But if you can't get even to the heart chakra, you can't even begin to work on this. And that Brahma Granti is what's blocking because the Brahma Granti is the identification with the body. The body is the self. I am the body. Huh? So this is kind of pathetic I, to me, you know, because when I took my Adi Guru, my first Sat Guru, the first thing he taught us is you are not this body. You are the consciousness within. So even though we were like, you know, Hare Krishna devotees, we were actually far beyond the Hatha yogis and the so-called Ashtanga yogis who only practice one Anga out of the eight. <laughs> Ridiculous. Because we knew this and we had training to get beyond this Brahma Granti getting up at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, taking a cold shower, immediately going down to the temple room and starting to chant and pray and meditate and all this. So we had a tremendous advantage and we made much quicker spiritual advancement than the people who concentrate too much on the body. So here's a diagram, the good old diagram again. <laughs> showing the seven chakras and the three grantis, the Brahma Granti, Vishnu Granti, and Rudra Granti. And it's also showing 
than the yogas that apply to those areas of spiritual advancement and so on and so forth. So you should get to know this chart, study it and learn it deeply because there's no, nothing more helpful to knowing where you are on the spiritual path as this understanding of the four views. Dvaitavada, Vishishta Dvaitavada, Vivartavada, and Ajatavada. And the symptoms and of each of those, we've talked about, I don't know, hundreds of times on this channel. But yet people just don't seem to get it. And I think it's because of the influence of this Brahma Granti. So anyway, Brahma Granti Vibedini means she pierces through this Brahma Granti because she is consciousness. So if one realizes that actually I'm not the body, I am consciousness, this is equivalent to piercing through Brahma Granti. Yeah. See, try to understand, these terms aren't just words. They have functional meaning and they illustrate certain uh, levels on the path. So one should understand them and how they work and then this will help very much. So the next one, 101, is Manipuranta Rudita. She appears in the navel chakra or uh, the diaphragm or solar plexus chakra. And this is where breathing happens. This is where movement happens because movement and breathing are always very much uh, joined together. If you study any martial arts or maybe even dancing, I don't know because I never really studied dancing. But certainly in martial arts, breathing and movement are very closely coupled and are studied together as one thing, not two things. Uh -huh. The breathing is part of the exercise. So that's not so much true with Qigong because Qigong has very little movement in it. And that movement is completely symmetrical. But as far as like Tai Chi, Oh boy, it's all about breathing and movement. So this is because this chakra controls the movement of the whole body. And if this chakra is healthy, then you can do all kinds of movements very efficiently, very beautifully and smoothly. And this is a kind of grace. And it's due to her presence in this chakra. When you break through the granta, the Brahma Granta especially, then you get a certain grace of movement. And this is very noticeable. Other people can tell. It's hard to tell from inside maybe. But from outside, people can tell that you have a certain, how can I say, ease of movement where everything remains in balance. And like I said, studying Tai Chi and things like that can help with this. But really, the source of the grace is always the mother. Uh, because she is the most graceful, the most beautiful. Uh, she, her voice is very musical. Her movements are all very, very beautiful, like dancing. Even when she's fighting, it looks like she's dancing. So this is the nature of the Divine Mother. This, this is the nature of actually the energy within our bodies. And if we can get over this ego attachment to the body or identification with the body, then we can sense her and ultimately we can meet her within. And this is the real start of the journey towards full self-realization. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung.